All right. Well, it's good to see some familiar faces. Uh, Coach Pittman said some nice things about me. Um, really grateful to him that had me back here. He's a huge influence on my life, my career. So it's an honor to be back working for him. Um, I'd like to thank Mr. Yurichek, too. It was really uh, good to me in the process of getting hired here and good to my wife. So don't have a lot to say other than it's good to be back and, and uh, excited to get going. Wanted to ask you about what you've done since you've been back. I know straight up recruiting, evaluating talent on hand. What's it been like? Uh, got on a 5 a.m. bird the day after we signed and went recruit, watched transfers for 12 hours and went, went recruiting. And so that's been the priority. That's the priority this time of year. Everybody knows that. And so you don't have a lot of time to do much else. And so, you know, you mix in uh, seeing a home here and there and trying to sell your house somewhere and make sure your wife and daughter are doing good. But the priority has been just finding some guys for today. Uh, I'm curious how much you've watched this program and situation from afar with your, you know, your journey and I mean, maybe kept your eye on this position. Well, um, I mean, here's the deal. I got my master's from here and I take a lot of pride in that. Um, and I have, you know, paid a lot of attention to the program every season. Um, you know, you guys on ESPN app, you can pick your favorite teams where you get all their updates. Well, the hogs have been on my ESPN app for, 10 years. So um, I've known just about everything that's gone on and I love this place. It's close to the, the house. Uh, I grew up in Kansas city. So um, it's just, uh, it's a really important place to me. So I have paid plenty of attention to it. It was important for you guys to keep, you know, your best players on the offensive line and also bring in some guys to compete with them. Just your thoughts on your three new uh, transfer additions primarily. Well, the most important thing I think in the transfer portal for me was getting the right guys, you know, want to avoid the FOMO. Hey, we got to fill all these spots right this second. I think the most important thing was that we got players that could play guys that could contribute right away. Um, guys that were made up of the right things internally, have the right makeup mindset, guys that fit the program, fit the situation. And um, that was what we did. And so, you know, the guys, you know, Keyshawn was obviously already in the in the mix here. I tried to recruit him uh, at Baylor. It had no chance. Um, so that was a good surprise when I got here. And then, you know, adding Addison and uh, Junior Carmona, just guys that love football. I mean, that's the, that was the priority is guys that love to play the position, have a passion for playing the position, um, have the makeup inside to, to do hard things because it is a, a thankless job. It's a thankless position. And when we talk to these guys in recruiting, you know, the offensive line world is you can you can kick a guy's rear end for 67 plays, but if he gets three sacks, he's SEC player of the week, and and Aunt Pam up in the stands thinks you're a bum. And so um, I think that's one of the things that you have to you have to be ready for to play that position in this league, and that was the important thing is finding guys with the right mentality. Coach Mason Choate, hogbeat.com. Welcome back to Fayetteville. Thank you. Um, the offensive line obviously had a tough year last year, but it seems like there's, you know, a lot of talented guys in that room. I'm curious if you've, you know, watched tape on any of the guys that are coming back and if anybody's impressed you so far. I think it's an impressive room. I mean, I think it's important to recognize, you know, when I met with the guys my one day here, and they were still all in town, is it's not like um, the room is full with a bunch of bums. That's not the case. They were recruited here for a reason. Um, they wear they wear that jersey proudly, and they have a lot of pride. And it was a hard year. I mean, my impressions are that you have guys that are hungry and they want to be good, they want to be coached, and they have a lot of pride in themselves and and being Razorbacks. And so, when you have pride and guys that love love to play the game, um, you got a chance to make something out of somebody. And so, I think the challenge for everybody um, that we talked about was to leave twenty three behind us. You know, we we had a meeting, we aired out a lot of things and talk through a lot of things. And, and we said, we're going to leave it in 2023 right where it belongs. And when guys come back in January, we need to, we need to be refreshed and refocused. And I think we'll, we'll do that. It seems like when you were hired, a lot of the same former players that were, you know, played under Pittman were super excited for you to be hired because you were here at the same time. Just have you talked to any of the guys that, you know, you knew when you were here the previous time? And how's that been? Well, I've been talking to those guys since I was here, you know, I mean, I think that's, Part of my style of coaching is building relationships and being really close with your players. And, 
You know, I've talked to a lot of those guys and I still talk to guys that maybe somebody, some people don't remember very much, you know, I talked to Austin Beck and Cordell Boyd and, and those guys that maybe weren't as glorified all conference guys, but guys that meant a lot to me and meant a lot to this program and what they gave to this place. And so I've never really stopped talking to those guys over the years. So um, it was just excited. They were just excited for me. Coach, you kind of talked a little bit about it just a moment ago when you're looking at players like in the portal, what you're looking for, the men mental side of it. But when you're looking at a guy like Carmona, for example, in the Mountain West, are there traits that you can see like on film, like things like that, that you think, okay, that could translate to the SEC? Yeah, I think the athleticism jumps off. I mean, I think when you can take athleticism plus desire to hurt people, you got a shot. He's very strong. He's only been playing football since his junior year of high school. And so he's only been playing the game for four years. His dad is a longtime head coach, offensive line coach. He's got that toughness drilled into him. And that's just who the family is. Um, I think when you watch his film, which what pops off the tape is the athletic ability, the ability to run, and then his willingness to put his face on people. And when you can take the want to with the athleticism, that's really the driving force. You know, you can find a great athlete on the O-line. Those guys are out there, but if they don't want to, if they don't want to put their face in the fire, you know, it's going to take a lot to get them to be really productive in this conference. And you mentioned having, you know, the Arkansas alerts on the ESPN app and everything. I'm curious when this position came open, did you reach out to Coach Pittman to ask about it, or did he reach out to you, or how did that process play out? Um, I mean, we just, me and Coach Pitt talked quite a bit, and he had brought it up to me that, there's a chance there's going to be some changes and what I'd be interested in. I mean, it wasn't, didn't take me but five milliseconds to say yes. So, and my wife. So it was, it was a no brainer. Eric, I, I get that wherever you were coach and you were committed to that place, but was this a place you always wanted to get back to? I, I mean, I don't know, maybe dream jobs too strong of a term, but just, was Arkansas a good place you wanted to be? I mean, Sam's talked about that from his perspective. Well, I mean, uh, you know, I was a JUCO coach, you know. I was a D2 coach and a JUCO coach when Coach Pittman hired me as a GA. And so I had no frame of reference for what Division One football looked like. I mean, I played in front of dozens of screaming fans in, uh, in college. And so when I got here and I got exposed to – Division one football, the SEC, you know, the, the coaching that was going on in this building. Um, this place has a great combination for me and my family. Again, my half of my family lives in Kansas City. You know, it's very close by. Um, being in the SEC and being close to home, I don't see a better, com you know, better combination out there for me. And so has this always been a place that I wanted to get back to? 100%. I mean, I, I said this a couple of weeks ago. I feel like everything that I've done in my career was to get an opportunity to come back here and be the line coach at Arkansas. And that was my goal. And I've had other opportunities to coach other places in the SEC, and I chose not to. Um, and when this one came about, it took me a very short amount of time to say yes. So I always want to be back. The center spot, Sam was up here talking. You heard him talking about the importance of finding that guy after the tackles. Can you maybe expound on that a little bit? Well, center just starts everything. It's the it's the tone setter. Um, center is typically your your best brain in the room. If not, you know, it's, another guy might be close, but you need somebody that can handle a lot of information, digest a lot of pictures, and be able to spit out words and be able to translate things from visual and, and get them out verbal got to be a great communicator, great leader. The center's got to be the first guy to run in the burning building. He's got to be the guy that's willing to go first and willing to lead, have great uh, volume, you know, and and that sets the tone for the rest of the guys. And just the leadership, I mean, just the way a center makes a call sets the tone for the whole thing. And if he whispers it or he says it in a meek way, um, you know, I think you're setting yourself up for a soft play. You have a center that steps up to the line of scrimmage and makes his ID and has confidence and provides confidence to the rest of the group. You got a chance to come off the ball and, and be successful. So I just think the the mental aspect and the leadership part of that position is so important to the game. And it's really underrated. And I'm biased. I played the position, so I'm very biased. But I think it's just such a tone setter for your whole offense. Center and the quarterback are the only two guys that touch the ball on every play. All right. Thank you, guys.